So I'm just going to introduce you to it and you can go on to do it in the future. But I'm telling you, I've done such a mountain of these things that I've destroyed four Glock slides. Um, and I would argue that to over the weekend, to whatever extent you perceive me to have any skill at shooting, to whatever extent that is, a lot, not a lot, whatever that is, uh, I'm telling you, a giant, huge portion of that skill has come from this drill and the other two dry drills that we will also do. Three triggers drill is this. This is simply a narrowly focused uh, mechanical drill working on increasing your agility at running the trigger straight back very aggressively and very well. So you know how you do dry practice sometimes and people con often concentrate on absolute best trigger press and absolute best trigger press and absolute best trigger press. And that is all good. And that's a really foundational thing to have. But then you get put in a, in a situation where there is time pressure where there wasn't before. And all of a sudden that just like doesn't translate at all. This is kind of a middle path method of trigger manipulation that tries to book in two extremes at a greater and greater level of combination. So on one hand, one end, one extreme is think of the very most accurate shot you are personally capable of firing with the handgun. So think of that trigger press, that level of accuracy. Okay, that's one bookend. Other bookend is think of how aggressively, just in terms of raw time, you can move your finger. I don't have a very fast finger. When I do this, I am not very impressed with myself. I'm like, well, that just that, that just feels so weak, right? But you can, you can observe this easily without a gun. How fast can you move your finger? Okay, so the hypothetical ideal that probably will remain hypothetical, but is a good goal and gets you lots of uh, benefit if you try it to try to do it, is ideally in the hypothetical ideal, you will be able to put those two things together at the same time. So you move your finger as aggressively as you can and are firing the very most accurate shot you are personally capable of firing. Okay, so that's like the hypothetical ideal. The drill that attempts to speak to that uh, is this three triggers drill or a drill that tries to speak to it. Um, and I would argue that to over the weekend, to whatever extent you perceive me to have any skill at shooting, to whatever extent that is, a lot, not a lot, whatever that is, uh, I'm telling you, a giant, huge portion of that skill has come from this drill and the other two dry drills that we will also do. We're only going to do a brief introduction to them in class because we're not going to, otherwise you'd spend all, I'd say, well, do it all day long. Okay, well, that's going to be a lame class. So I'm just going to introduce you to it and you can go on to do it in the future. But I'm telling you, I've done such a mountain of these things that I've destroyed four Glock slides doing these. Uh, you know the round case head imprint on the breech face? That thing goes, blunt, busts out forward after enough times of the firing pin going tick, 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 and eventually you bust out the breech face. Uh, so I've done them a lot and they have helped me a huge amount. So here's three triggers. So you start out with the unloaded gun and we are gonna have you use both the A zone in the body and the white circle in the head. So you have to attend to a little differing levels of quality on this. First part is you start on sites with finger and register. At a moment of your choosing, as quickly as you can and well enough for this target, move your finger to the trigger and press it straight back. So trigger manipulation. Ought to, you ought to isolate the trigger finger. That's really key. If you move other things, other parts of your hand, other fingers, that's going to mess it up. You need to isolate the trigger finger. You need to move it as straight back as possible and with a continuous increase in pressure. The more aggressive the shot, the more the pressure is going to look like that and the less it's going to look like that, like on maybe a 25-yard shot. So more pressure, more aggressively, sooner more increase on, on the trigger. Uh, that's kind of the key mechanically to the trigger manipulation. Now, doing it well enough for that target, that is going to be judged by you in the sights or dot. That's how you're going to know. It's by paying attention with your eyes and mind to what the dot or the sights are telling you when the gun goes click. If it tells you it wasn't good enough, you saw too much movement that you know that would have been a bad shot for the target zone we've defined, A zone in the body at seven yards, foreign circle in the head at seven yards, then you need to press the trigger better. I didn't say slower. That's less relevant. What I want you to do is more isolated trigger finger, more straight back, more continuous increase in pressure, let, especially that isolated part. That isolation part is really gigantic. Uh, you also, support hand grip plays into that big time, right? The better your support hand grip, the less your gun is gonna move when you do press the trigger and inevitably impart at least a tiny bit of movement to it. Uh, but key thing is you gotta pay lots of attention to the sights or dot and let those tell you was your shot good enough or not. Just avoid thinking in terms of, I need to press the trigger faster or slower. Think more levels of care, more aggressively you can get away with, or you need to be more careful, you need to press the trigger better. And lots of times that comes, uh, what you do is you end up correcting it with a better intention, as opposed to simply spending more time on it that may or may not actually correct it. So 
Uh, that was the first part. Second part, drill's the same, except the start position is different. You're gonna start on sights, finger touching the trigger with no pressure at all. And at a moment of your choosing, run the trigger straight back from there, okay? Third part, same thing, but different start position. On sights, on trigger, with partial pressure applied. At some moment of your choosing, run the trigger straight back from there. Ooh, I jerked that one. I would I saw it, uh, I was aiming here, and my shot calling said I would have hit here. So what that means is it was perfectly fine for the drill. It wasn't the most perfect thing I could have done, and I could tr press the trigger better than on that one. First two had looked really good to me. Now, if you are using the DASA gun, this drill, all double action. Doesn't mean you couldn't also do it single action, but for, for our purposes, what we're doing, this is the first shot. We're gonna do all double action if you're using a double action, single action gun. On a striker fired gun, the easy place to determine uh, where am I partial pressure on the, on the trigger is get through the slack, you're sitting on the pressure wall and you press it from there. 